We are live streaming now, and uh, you'll open the session to the public. Is that okay? I hope you have a fantastic seminar. Bye. Bye bye. You can start. Okay. So we are now 9 a.m. from Brazil, from Recife, and uh, I would like to start our workshop, the second workshop of All Atlantic Coast Net. This is a side event of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance the Forum in 2022. And it's a pleasure to welcome all of you to our workshop. And we will have two sections. In the first section, we will have the presentations of a different network, coastal network involved in the All Atlantic Coast Net. And uh, in the second section, we will have a presentation that uh, is about uh, the updates uh, of Coast Predict program that will be done by Joaquin the, the, from the, the Spain, colleague from, from the Coastnet. So I, I would like also to, to say that uh, the questions could be good and were very welcome during all the, the workshop. And uh, I would ask you please to, to put the session in QA uh, mode uh, as a, a, a way to, to to give you uh, some answers about the the colleagues that you are exposing, are presenting their their uh, networks and the the conclusions and the inputs in this workshop. So, very welcome to all of you. And now I think that we can start. I, I will start by by giving the floor to Laurent Delaunay, a friend that co-hosting this workshop, and Laurent. We make a, a short presentation about Coastnet as a, a, a first uh, a first uh, way to to overcome uh, the main characteristics and features of the All Atlantic Coastnet. Please, Lohan. Thanks a lot, Moisir. Uh, so let's have a few words about this uh, uh, Coastnet uh, draft actions. Uh, ACOSNET means uh, All Atlantic Coastal Observing and Technology Network. And uh, as Moisir described, uh, this is the second side event uh, uh, to the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. And uh, today it's a side event of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance 2022 Forum. And uh, we would like to thank a lot uh, the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance for inviting us to for to organize this side event. Uh, we would like to uh, thanks a lot the Encore EU project and uh, all the speakers and uh, the advisory uh, who, who are helping who are helping us that is to say cost predict initiatives and of course we would like to thank all the attendees. So uh, the agenda that was described uh, by Boisir, uh, this first, uh, we will have some uh, uh, description of the coastal observation network uh, in this all Atlantic Alliance with uh, the Simcosta co coastal observation network, the MIPO, the PN Boyas, the MIKI EIDEO, CROGT, CVO, Jericho RI, Propau, and CCM CRI, who are going to give us the status a little bit of their observing networks and their needs. And we will go after these presentations uh, into a discussion where we will have an update and advance on cost product program uh, given by Joaquin Tintore from Society in Spain. And we could have discussions uh, about uh, the needs uh, we would have to. Uh, to uh, cooperate between uh, all these uh, coastal observing uh, networks. Few words about the uh, ACOSNET dot actions. It's a network dedicated to marine coastal observations with the country who are part, which were part of the Belen and Galway st statements. That is to say, Brazil, Argentina, South Africa, West Africa, Cabo Verde, and Europe. And as advisory, we have Atlanta West on board and as well, Cospredi. 
The main objective of this joint action is to uh, share best practices on platform operation and methodology, to discuss, to discuss and exchange about needs and gaps on technology, to have uh, exchange about the data format, the data banking and data access. Uh, we, uh, we could have exchange as well about country initiatives and needs that could be linked to the EOS techno technology forum, the ACT in US or the UN Ocean Indicate Coastal Credit. Uh, we could, we can as well exchange uh, information or initiatives about transnational access and virtual access that are happening in the various uh, networks. Training, acti training activities as well about methodology, platform operation, intercooperation of existing sensors, easy access sensors development, etc. And as well discuss about perspectives for long-term transatlantic coastal network, addressing science topics as, for example, the Lancy continuum. There are some long terms. I will add on the long term objectives as is on as these joint actions. It's to promote a better scientific knowledge about the links and exchanges between offshore and inshore coastal regions, to connect, align, and maximize the coastal observation effort that are already existing in both edges of the tropical and southern Atlantic, to reduce the use of common guidelines, to keep a close link with open ocean observing networks in the whole Atlantic basins to promote cooperation, for example, in ship type, ship, ship time or equipment, to encourage and identify new sources of funds, for example, for the maintenance of the network, especially those who made available in calls for proposals from international and transnational funding agencies. And as well, to contribute to the predicting global ocean, coastal ocean towards the more resilient society as proposed for the United Nations decade and to follow the own UN Ocean Decade Implementation Plan to apply for endorsement by the UN Ocean Decade. Uh, this AACOSNET joint action is nested, is more than strongly related, it's nested in uh, an action called AA Marinet, that is the All Atlantic Marine Research Infrastructures for long-term collaboration framework for infrastructure initiative at the Atlantic Ocean level. This is the second side event. So this is the second event for this Agostet uh, actions. And at the end of the first uh, side event that happened one year ago, uh, we established some uh, common needs. The first one was to have some exchange in terms of knowledge, like training, teaching, cultures of planning and documenting, and as well some personnel exchange pro pro program. As well, we discussed about exchanging best practices, trying to have a common database, first at the country le le level, uh, to have some possibilities of calibration of sensors in terms of laboratory and knowledge, but very important, adapted to specificities of each country, to, go, to try to go towards a global metrology network for coastal observations, and we saw that there are some initiatives that are already trying to establish this at the European level, at least, but that have some links with uh, uh, more than uh, the Europe borders. We discussed about local sensor technology, and I know that in, in the Encore project, there is a joint action dedicated to uh, local sensors with a specific training that is organized in Argentina, I think trying to find some financial support for maintenance and expansion, and sharing contact, building a shared space for presentations and links to common interest, publication, and document. So uh, we should start the Coastal Observation Network uh, sessions. And uh, to do so, we will give the voice to uh, Sim Costa, uh, Brazil, Dr. Carlos Garcia. Thanks a lot. Many thanks, Lohan, for the overview. Right. And while uh, we wait for uh, Carlos Garcia, I would add that in a, uh, AA Coastnet is indeed a very important uh, joint action because, as far as I know, uh, this is the first time that you have coastal networks working together in the Atlantic Basin. And this is uh, something that we should improve and, and foster. 
É, Please, Garcia. Michael. Morning. Can you see the, my presentation? Yeah? Yes, that's okay. good. Perfect. Okay, guys, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I'm very glad to, to be here with all of you to share <clears throat> our achievements uh, in Brazil regarding uh, coastal monitoring of the Brazilian coastline. <clears throat> so I'm coordinating the Brazilian coastal monitoring system. So it's is a, a monitoring system as, as it started in 2011. So it's, it's about 10 years already. So I'm from Federal University of Rio Grande, extreme south of Brazil. <clears throat> and I coordinate uh, uh, a very huge um, program in Brazil where there's a lot of people involved from different institutions, mainly from universities. So the idea is, is to get uh, <clears throat> data along the Brazilian coast, is to get actually essential climate variables uh, and using uh, fixed and floating platforms along the Brazilian coast. So the idea is to, to provide the continuous and free access data to everybody. Uh, so the data is available at the website of Syncosta. We also want to develop tools and education material for people to use at uh, different levels of education. And finally, to contribute to the Brazilian government for climate-related policies. Um, <clears throat> So the strategy of implementing SYNCOST is based on a lot of you know, academic institutions along the Brazilian coastline. So in this slide, you can see all the institutions would take part in SYNCOST. So we have a national coordination stream of Brazil. I'm the coordinator since the beginning of SYNCOST and in Rio Grande do Sul state. And we got a lot of platforms around the, <clears throat> along the Brazilian coast from the south to the north. Um, the idea is that uh, every, every academic institution receives a platform either fixed on land on, or floating on coastal waters. They have to, to, have, uh, to, to build a local team to work with the national team. Uh, most of platforms are mooring buoys. We have been using four different buoys, and the tide gauge uh, has been constructed in, in Brazil, but uh, all the equipments, all of them, are brought from abroad. So we, we got a lot of instruments from Canadian, American, and Spanish um, companies. And most of them come from the United States. Um, seabird and other kind of manufacturers. So those boys are <clears throat> located in different parts of Brazil. And uh, the variables we have been observed in the last 10 years, the essential climate variables, we, we try to, to follow the global climate observing system uh, procedures. And the atmosphere and ocean variables are listed on this slide, but I should point it out, uh, depending on the buoy, you have more or less variables measured by the instrument. So it depends on the, and the institution will receive the data, the labs of the institution, the, <clears throat> how they, they get involved with the same poster and so on. So it depends on each institution. Uh, we have also a, a web page, uh, which is, is you, you can uh, look at the data. Uh, you can download the data freely. Uh, there are some tools you can visualize the data. You can uh, uh, choose a, a specific part of the, the time and visualize the data. And some tools are available on the website. There, there is an automatic data quality control has been 
constructed in <clears throat> by Steve Costa team based on, on Quartod from IWUS. And it offers also technical support to all people who need some advice on, on the data. Um, the, the, we, since the beginning, uh, my, we are very concerned about the data quality. So we have a very huge program of calibration of the sensors, which has to be sent abroad, which is very time consuming for us. We do have a in situ validation every time we do a kind of um, a maintenance of a buoy or a sensor. We, 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 we make measurements with independent instrument to verify the performance of each sensor. We have developed some biofolic control techniques. And as I said before, the data quality of the data is based in part of developed by uh, <clears throat> IOUs from uh, uh, United States of America. Uh, the main users of SYNCOST is our diverse environmental agencies. They use a lot of data for competition, nautical sports. The Brazilian Navy uses the data for every mod modeling weather forecast. And we are uh, concentrating our efforts now with port authorities because we have facing several problems regarding funding and maintaining the, the system. So we have been used with port authorities in Rio Grande port and Rio de Janeiro port. Sincosta is member of uh, several network, uh, two important Brazilian network, which is Rede Clima, the Brazilian Climate Change Network in Goose Brazil, the Global Ocean Observing System in Brazil. Uh, internationally, we are involved with, with COCAS, which is a coastal ocean observatory for climate CO2 and as in case for the Global South Society, and AA Coastal Net, as we are talking now. Um, so since the, the last meeting in June last year, uh, we have some you know, um, new advances uh, on St. Boston. We had an agreement with the city hall of Rio de Janeiro. We, did, we had a, the first workshop on monetary system modeling of Brazilian coast in November last, last year. We received two new spotter software buoys to be deployed in, um, in a region in the northeast of Brazil. And we have also an agreement with Port AES, uh, a kind of a half million dollar uh, contract for um, for the next two years. So the agreement with City Hall of Rio de Janeiro is uh, uh, what they're going to do is just they going to use, use the data provided by two boys in Rio de Janeiro and the data flows directly to the uh, Centro de Operações da Prefeitura, which is a kind of uh, operating center for the City Hall of Rio de Janeiro. So they can release as some um, <clears throat> preventive actions in case of an extreme event in Rio de Janeiro. We had that kind of problem in the past in Rio de Janeiro. In uh, November uh, 10th and 11th, we had the first seminar, uh, we called a workshop on monitoring system model in the Brazilian coast. We had four Sincosta team presentations, nine Sincosta data users presentations, uh, most of uh, Sincosta users' presentation were uh, we, we, we select people who are, you know, using the data along the Brazilian coast. So we have uh, private companies presented the, the results and we have academic institutions as well. So the data has been, have been used for hydrodynamic modeling, data analysis and its application, dispersion plumes uh, for dredging material. Uh, the, the dynamic draft program in the in the in Rio de Janeiro. Um, I can see the rest of uh, my uh, more for dynamic of sand beach in Rio de Janeiro as well. Uh, we have some people who are comparing modeling uh, wave modeling with our data. Uh, because some of the boys have got some biogeochemical sensors, people are 
looking at daily biogeochemical variability in some environments along the Brazilian coast, uh, risk assessment of suspended solid concentrations on Paul, and also uh, we're using uh, sequencer data for evaluate ocean color uh, algorithm for mapping chlorophyll concentration from space. We had four, 144 attendants, most of them are students, 64% undergraduate students, which is good. People, the young people are interested in getting the data and look at how to, they can use the data. Uh, the new spotter buoys will be deployed in pretty soon in coral reefs in Northeast Brazil. Um, this, these buoys were donation by Aqualink. So data will be available at Aqualink Sincosta sites. So, um, uh, the main highlights I mean, Brazil from sea cost so far is, um, is a pool academic institution with similar goals. So we have several institutions along the Brazilian coast working together with the same objective. We're trying to monitor essential climate variables in Brazilian coastal water with high frequency, with a, a very high quality data control system. We got along the 10 years of uh, experience in maintenance and monitoring. And we're trying to, uh, to find a variety of partner sponsors to secure that system won't die <laughs> because uh, we have several uh, cuts in the budget for science and technology in Brazil. I don't know if you have heard about it. So the main sponsor of Sincosta is our um, uh, Hedy Klima, Fundo Klima, Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation. So, so a, a Brazilian, federal Brazilian agencies and local sponsors such as Port do Rio Grande and some uh, port uh, companies in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, that's, I have to talk. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thanks a lot, uh, Carlos. Uh, Moisir, do we allow some questions or do you we switch? Directly? I think that we can we can follow all presentations and uh, keep okay. the questions for by by the end of the, of the session. Okay, so the second uh, to present is Mepro Mipro from uh, Dr. Fabio Nacimento, please. Okay, we see your presentation perfectly. But we do not hear you. Fabio? Now? Okay. Okay, that's good. So, um, our program, MAPRO, MAPRO is the acronym of Ocean Preservation Best Friends. It's the program of the Boost Brazil, that's uh, the incipient program that started a few months before the, the pandemic in October 2019. And the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro is the leading uh, institution and I'm the coordinator of this program. So the idea is to promote best practice as an essential component for the ocean preservation value chain in the scope of this. <clears throat> So uh, the idea is the adoption of search for best threats should embrace all the entire data cycle, uh, life cycle. So since the, the definition of reports and demands, feel the dissemination of the data. Uh, and the, 
And here uh, we can see a hypothetical resource need current including uh, people, equipment, facilities, funding, etc. And we can see that measure stage is where, where there is the greatest demand for resource. So we need to take care of the previous and steer stage to provide good results for the community to, that will use that. And thinking of this, we can start to understand that we need to improve synergies between different areas of the science working in transversal way looking for methodology that uh, repeatedly produce superior results in the adoption and employment of these procedures in multiple organizations should be the goals and focus of this program. The Brazilian program intends to be transversal uh, from working from the planning stage to the end of the quality control stage. We, we, don't, we don't have Fabio, Fabio, sorry. Uh, yes. could, could, you, to, to, could you speak closer the, the micro, please? Because it's sometimes better now? We, it's better. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, sorry. So the idea is to guarantee the, the, the quality of the, the data and metadata that will be storage. Till this moment, the ongoing initiatives last year in August, uh, we did the first workshop to harmonization of the procedures and initiatives in Brazilian ocean monitoring programs. This workshop uh, was done by the BEPRO with Sim Costa and the National Buoy Program. The idea is to start to, to strengthen relations and work in the unification of the standards and procedures. Uh, I could say that we, we don't have um, a great culture in comparative documentation and methodology. So we need to work together to, to get the better results. In, uh, in Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, now we have a, a course of best practice in the ocean observation. It's uh, a discipline for the graduate, for graduate students. And during the pandemic, um, we started to erect the first calibration facility for wave sensors and other kind of inertial sensors like uh, HMS and the back motion sensors. This, this facility is in the Oceanographic Instrumentation Laboratory. And, uh, it has uh, a Ferris wheel wave sensor calibration equipment that, uh, that, we, that it does uh, orbital motion of two meters uh, of diameter uh, simulating uh, orbital motion of a uh, wave in, uh, in a deep sea situation, and, uh, creating period periods uh, from two seconds to 30 seconds. We can control the, the, the speed of the rotation by a servo motor and close loop speed controller and, and measure the, the, all the, the heat and the, the displacement, the horizontal displacement of the sensor or the buoy, which is called the buoy equipment. Nowadays, we are completing the control system installation and I hope to start up the whole system next October. The other equipment that we, uh, we developed he has a vertical motion simulator. It's working. This, this vertical motion, uh, motion simulator has a, a servo motor 
with a holder that um, we can control the, the, the velocity huge accuracy and a table a sensor table that moves vertically in, in by guide rails and in the side of this equipment we have a, a linear scale that uh, measures the displacement which appears of uh, seven micrometers the equipment can reproduce sinusoidal or other programmable movements in a range until uh, 1.4 meter and here it's from 1 to 30 seconds and we have a curious of the measurement better than 0.1 millimeters and you can see here uh, sinusoidal movements of the sensor this is uh, HMS sensor the telecom sensor so we can reproduce some movements like uh, uh, this orange curve is a, a step response uh, test for, for the sensor. So we can produce a one meter step response sensor test, test the sensors, or reproduce uh, uh, some vital curves to test the, not, not just heat. But uh, to calibrate to, to, verif to do a verification of the, the conditions of each accelerometer of the sensor. Just changing the position of the sensor on the machine to test each accelerometer. And so there is the other equipment that we developed that we think is working also is the angular motion sensor. The system is uh, installed on the, the vertical motion sensor. So we can have uh, an angular motion on, on the sensor uh, axis. And one degree of freedom motion, angular motion sensor. So we can reproduce angles and angular velocities. The system also can produce uh, sinusoidal and programmable uh, movements in a range uh, plus minus 30 degrees, which are produced better than 0.1 degrees. Okay, with this sensor table, we can, now we are developing some uh, tests uh, to verificate the Airshock sensor. This uh, one of the tests is a, a step, a static step test that we produce some specific angles during 90 seconds to verify the stability of the sensor. So this test is still 20 degrees up and down the direction. And we reproduce some sinusoidal curves. To, to test the the whole and pitch uh, angle results the sensor and to verify the the height gyro sensors of the, the sensor. So verifying uh, the height gyros and the and the accelerometers, you can verify the, the, the calibration curve. You can get the calibration curve. Which, which, so that is it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, Garcia. Thank you, Fabio. So uh, I think that you, you can move on. And uh, I'd like to invite uh, Tobias Ramalho from the Brazilian National Bui Program, Penny Boya, to make his presentation. Tobias, please. Hello, everyone. Are you, everyone are seeing my presentation? Yes, that's good. The audio is good. It's okay. Yes, that's okay. The audio is good. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So, 
Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I'm Lieutenant Tobias. I work at the Brazilian Navy Hydrographic Center. And I'm here today to present the advances of Brazil National Bureau Program in respect of the ECOSNET. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Moacir and Lohan for the invitation. It's an honor to be here and to present uh, a little bit of our work in Brazil. So the main mission of Penny Boyer, the Brazil National Bureau Program, uh, is to collect metal ocean data using a network of moored buoys, drifters, and arbor floats. And with this buoy, we also want to operate, we also have to operate a real-time data transmission system and release the free data to the public. So Penny Boyer, uh, in Penny Boyer, we have a lot of, part, uh, we, have, uh, we have the participation of uh, uh, some institutions, companies and Navy bases. And Penny Boys is a part of the Brazilian contribution to global ocean uh, observation system, the Goose Brazil. And Penny Boy is also a part of some international forums for buoys like DPCP and ISABP, ASABP, and also for AA Coastnet. The main clients of Penny Boy is the Marine Meteorological Service, is the, is the Marine Meteorological Service, is the official service for the weather forecast at, at sea for the South Atlantic. So the operational project of Penny Boya the, uh, has the objective to maintain five buoys along the coast, five moored buoys along the coast. So we already deployed, this, this, this five, it's the green ones here. We already deployed nine uh, along our history. So we also want to maintain a five per five degree array of drifters, uh, considering uh, SVP and spotter drifters. And we also uh, want to deploy algo floats. So since the beginning, we, are, we already deployed nine algo floats along the Brazilian coast. So we work with some buoys that are developed in Brazil. I will talk about that later, uh, these two buoys here. But we also work with buoys that are developed abroad. So some buoys from US, Canada, and Europe. Uh, together with Penny Boya, we also have a part of Penny Boya that's uh, it's the name of, we have a project with Petrobras called Hemobs. So this project is, is, is contributes to Penny Boya to increase the number of buoys in operation in the Brazilian coast. So Hemobs project has the objective to develop a Brazilian buoy, so we are we, are, we already develop it. Uh, so it's this buoy here, call it BMOBR. So we de we, we develop the who and the and the electronics here in Brazil together with some universities uh, like UFRJ, some companies like Massey Ocean and others. And uh, with this buoy, we also want to deploy some, some buoys along the Brazilian coast. So we developed buoys in uh, uh, oil regions and some islands in Brazil, like uh, Alcatraz, Abrolhos, and Noronha. And with this project, we also operate gliders. So this is the, the Hemobis project. The main problem of Penboya is the vandalism. So uh, the in 2016, we have the, the highest number of buoys in operation at the same time. So we had nine buoys in operation. But now, considering the Penny Boyer, we do not, you do not have any buoys in operation for Penny Boyer. We have buoys in operation for the Ham Office project, but not for Penny Boyer. We have three buoys in operation right now. So the main problem is the vandalism. So since the beginning of the program, we have almost $1 million of loss material loss caused by the vandalism. It's increasing the last three, three years. And one thing that we are doing right now is we are design, we designing, uh, we, it's a Brazilian company design a uh, Buyocan, uh, the name of the company is Messing Ocean. So we designed this Buyocan together in the project with Petrobras. And with this Buyocan, we can get some vessels that are close, close to our buoys so we can identify if uh, if you have a vandalism, you can identify the responsible of this vandalism, like this picture here, so, where we can see a vessel really close to our buoys. Um, 
And we, with this Buyokan, we also can take pictures of uh, events. So this picture here represents the uh, tropical storm that we had in Brazil last year, the Putin. Since the last uh, Our Atlantic uh, workshop that we had last year, June last year, if I'm not wrong. So we did a lot of jobs. So in 2021, we deployed some buoys. We deployed a buoy in Abrolhos, a buoy in Mexilhão uh, oil region in Southeast Coast. We developed, a, we, de, we deployed three buoys in Antarctica. So we, during the summer, so we start a monitoring system in Antarctica to, in a project together with Petrobras and INPE. We, we did it together with INPE and so far, uh, the first measurements of waves in the Drake Passage. So we deploy 40 wavy drifters in the Drake Passage. And this buoy already measure waves, high, uh, waves higher than uh, 10 meters. And, and during this period, we, we get closer to the other uh, programs or, uh, in Brazil. Uh, so in July last year, we participate in a call for wave buoys, a uh, call from DBCP, together with Sincos and Hemo. In August last year, we had a workshop uh, with uh, Sincos and ML Pro for the harmonization of the, of the, the logistics and activities and procedures of its program. And in September uh, this last year, uh, uh, it, it was created in Gus Brazil, the shallow and deep water moving group. So uh, to, to, to get closer the, the projects in Brazil that work with buoys like Penboia, Sincosta, Pirata, and MEPO. In 2022, we deployed buoys in Campus Base. Uh, we, we have to end the monitor system in Antarctica because it's not possible to deploy a buoy in the winter there. So in the end of the summer, we have to take off the buoy. So we take the three buoys off. We deploy a buoy in Alcatraz. We did just deploy a buoy in Oronha last Saturday. So, uh, and for the, this month and the next month, we are planning to deploy a buoy in Vituba. So we are talking with Sincosta to deploy a buoy together in Vituba. We also want to deploy four buoys in the Santos and Campo Bases and three buoys, two buoys in South Brazil. So I think we have a lot of work for the next two months. For the present and future. So we want to increase the number of the drifters uh, in the South Atlantic and Drake. So drifters is this SVP drifters and wave buoys. So this is an example of the wave buoys that we deploy in Drake. Uh, the, the end of the last year. We also want to uh, start the deployment of five Argo floats per year for the next five years. It's this, this deployment of Argo floats is a part of the HEMO project. And in the part of the HEMO Ops project, we will start to deploy the first glider in 2022, I hope in October, and the sec in, a, in a second glider in 2023. For the future, we hope that by the end of 2023, we plan to complete the, our entire network in the South and East Brazil. So I hope we can have a lot of, a lot of green and working buoys until the end of next year. I hope that vandalism uh, will be, I hope that we can make vandalism a smaller problem, I hope. And for sure, uh, we want to we want to get closer to the other monitoring programs in Brazil. So we we uh, I hope that we can have other work workshops with Sincosta and MEPRO, and with the creation of the shallow and deep water moving group of the Goose Brazil, uh, together with Penniboya, Pirata, Sincosta, and MEPRO and other Brazilian projects. I hope that we can optimization the human and financial resource. We can have more convergence of actions and we can standardization uh, the method methodologies and procedures that you use in Brazil. And with that, so this slide presents less our Atlantic. So with this 
this partnership here. I hope that all the weakness, gaps, and needs that I present last year, we can uh, have less, minimize that, so we can have more, more systems in operation at the Brazilian coast. Thank everyone for your time. So if you haven't up some free, uh, uh, I will be glad to answer to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tobias. Thank you. Uh, please, please, Lohan, go ahead. No, 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 I was going to say the same thing that, that you. Thanks a lot, Tobias, and giving the voice to the next speaker. Uh, that is uh, Gerardo Emperio for Imaquiadio. I, I think that Gerardo is not with us, so uh, maybe we should move on. Just waiting okay. uh, for the for the, the people and uh, Geraldo and uh, Saliu. He, I don't I don't know if he is here. And uh, may, maybe Lohan, you could uh, jump to your presentation okay. and uh, no waiting problem. for the sure. the other guys. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me share my screen. Share my screen. I go right. Okay, I switch to full screen. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few words about Jericho Arai, is to say the joint European research infrastructures for coastal observation uh, in Europe. Um, so uh, the vision that we have for these uh, observing infrastructures is to be by 2030, the European gateway to long-term scientific observations and related uh, for European coastal marine systems, or related services, sorry, uh, I forgot, for European, I put, I'm just annoyed by the window, yeah, and related services for European coastal marine system. And we try to reach the convergence between the land, ocean, and atmosphere to empower the European research excellence and expertise for the benefit of society. Um, Jericho era is at a key position within the high landscape. The coastal domain is at the interface between land and ocean. And uh, you can see that on that slide that in Europe, we have many other uh, research infrastructures that are uh, dedicated to marine observations. So Jericho era uh, is working in collaboration with these other marine research infrastructures like Euro Argo for the float, and so Eric for the Baton uh, Observatory and the, the Water Column Observations, some other research infrastructures dedicated to, for example, the Carbonate System, ICOS, and uh, many others. And all these research infrastructures dedicated to the marine observations are uh, uh, under the, the hat of Eurogoos and uh, under the hat as well of EUs that is connected to GOOS. Uh, the, the Jericho AI research infrastructure is made of more than 500 platforms that can be uh, some uh, pattern based observatory, some fixed platforms, some high frequency radar, some manual sampling, and as well some ferry box line, gliders, profilers, coastal profilers, of course, research vessels, and uh, surface drifters. Uh, is the, the, the Jericho research infrastructures is structured in a 13 European region. Uh, that is, for example, the North Sea, the Baltic Sea, the Baltic Sea and Gulf in Finland, the Kattegat, that Skagerrak region, etc., etc. And every uh, region, every site is as a specific. Uh, research uh, research program and as well a specific program to uh, consolidate its uh, its uh, functioning in terms of a multi-platform and multidisciplinary approach there are about 19 European countries who, who are participating uh, to the Jericho research infrastructures and it's uh, 19 European countries as represented by 40 different partners. I was mentioning the different sites 
you can have a bigger view of them and you can see that in the we have as uh, i already described the north part of uh, the jericho site but there is as well the northwest mediterranean the, the northeast mediterranean uh, the strait of sicily the adriatic sea the iberian margin and the bay of biscay etc uh, there are various scientific topics, six uh, scientific topics uh, that, is, that, uh, that are addressed by the Jericho Research Infrastructures. The first one is dedicated to macrobiotic and biodiversity, coastal forecasting, chemical contaminant and biological response, hydrography and transport, coastal and carbon flux, phytoplankton, and harmful algal blooms and notifications. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, the, the, the Jericho research infrastructures uh, try to establish some uh, collaboration between research and infrastructures and with some other coastal networks, for example, through uh, the mean of uh, the AA Coastnet initiatives. And the idea is to try to integrate our approaches in terms of knowledge, methods, observing activities to establish some use case from region to EU and ACOSNET by sharing of technologies, best practices, joint workshop, transnational access, and et cetera. And uh, the various CEOs and ACOSNET incentive discussions can be established to try to uh, build up some joint EU proposals to, uh, to invite new countries to uh, the research infrastructure to establish some memorandum of understanding. Etc. And uh, the idea is to engage a synergy to coordinate, optimize, and generate IT training. Uh, for the second uh, workshop, I would like to describe you uh, how Jericho research, the Jericho research infrastructures is trying to, to improve the data and services that uh, are provided by uh, the Jericho research infrastructures. In terms of product and services, we are proposing some physical access to our fixed platform, gliders, ferry box, some multi-platforms, initiatives, and other special equipment in, in terms of transnational access that are accessible through BioSchool. And um, we have as well uh, calibration facilities that are uh, available and one third uh, sort of product and services on which I'm going to uh, insist a little bit is the virtual access, what we call Jericho Core and eJericho. You can see on that diagrams on the left side, this is the data providers. Uh, in, on the second pillar, if I could say, this is the data aggregators that you may know, like uh, Copernicus, uh, Eurogoose as well, through their ruses. Uh, the institute stack, CDATANET, uh, etc. And on the right side, we have the users. And Jericho is trying to establish uh, e infrastructures in order to provide e in, a, in, a, in a convenient way to the users all the data and product uh, that are dedicated to coastal observations. We call it the Jericho Core. And um, this is Jer the Jericho Core that is under development. Uh, these last years is the unified central hub of the Jericho Research Infrastructures and is to discover, access, manage, and interact with Jericho Research Area resources that I'm going to describe. The vision of this Jericho Core is to have a coastal ocean resources environment of the Jericho Research Infrastructures to enhance virtual access to all Jericho Area related resources and development of coastal focused services. And the mission is to improve coastal data and information fairness by facilitating the development of services to support specialized thematic research activities and building synergy for coastal ocean resources and services between Jericho era and all the international research infrastructures. The Jericho research infrastructure resources can be specific data set, some software that we can use to do some specific data treatment, some best practices, some manuals for specific equipment dedicated to coastal observation, publication, projects, observatories, equipment, data servers, e-library, support, training, etc. And other RI related to coastal observation and science can be hosted on what we call the Jericho Core. 
I will give you two examples uh, very rapidly of uh, services that we provide. For example, there is a service that is dedicated to high frequency radar, where that gives an interactive map showing the inventory of the European high frequency radar network, some best practices, some tools for data treatment, some report that explain how to uh, make these equipments working or some outage database. Um, the gap field surface current field implement initially in BFB scale and Northwest Med. Okay, there is another services that is given uh, dedicated to gliders with some uh, uh, data related to the geotrophic transport, viability of the circulation, some impact on north-south water mass exchange, and some impact on marine ecosystem, bluefin, tuna, jellyfish. So this is the end of my presentations, and uh, thanks a lot. Thanks, Lohan. Many thanks for the presentation. Uh, I think that we could, we could uh, let the discussion and the question at the end. Uh, I have yes. noted some uh, uh, question already for Garcia and uh, for you as well. But uh, let's move on. I'd like to invite uh, Geraldo Perillo from the EMAC IA ADO uh, from Argentina. Geraldo, many thanks. I know that you have a, 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 a hard agenda this week, but yeah. uh, it's nice to see you and to have you together with us. Please. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, sorry, I, I cannot stay all the time, but uh, I will give you my, my presentation. Yeah, right away. Let me share my screen. I hope you, you are seeing it. Yes, that's good. Okay. Uh, well, what I'm going to present today is uh, uh, very shortly the course we are pre proposing to have uh, within the R Anchor uh, and the AcoxNet uh, uh, for um, uh, junior um, uh, electronic engineers or, or, or mechanical engineers or uh, even though or even oceanographers to uh, help them to develop uh, their own uh, sensors and, and measuring platforms for uh, a low cost so they can uh, have their their they can develop their own program with uh, the minimum resources uh, possible uh, so far the, the idea is that this course will be uh, given in in october of this year uh, we are looking forward we're gonna looking forward for having the more uh, registers so far we have only one register the, in the in this course, but I will give you the idea of this of this course. Uh, with the objective is uh, an overview of the instrumentation, overview of an actual monitoring program, uh, uh, and we will, that will be the objective of the presentation, the course objective and course development. And we uh, actually we have been very successful for the last uh, almost uh, eighteen years in developing our own sensors. Uh, like a conductivity, temperature, uh, optical bus scatter, uh, water level, uh, both pressure and acoustic, uh, which we use for measuring also uh, waves and, uh, and tides. Uh, we have a wave, a wave sensor that is being done, do the, we uh, use for acceleration in a buoy. Uh, of course, all the meteorological uh, sensors also. And uh, this is uh, basically some of the sensors we have developed. And we also have uh, developed our own platforms, like uh, uh, st uh, coastal stations, like the ones you see in, let me see, I can I not get my, in my coastal station that you see here, it, this is on, on the side of a, of a lake. And this is in a, it's a, it's a typical buoy that we have developed. We, we build our the first oceanographic buoy that has been installed in uh, in Argentina in the in the Drake Passage, 
And we, so far from them, we have something like uh, uh, 15 buoys, both in, uh, in oceanic environments and lakes. And these uh, all are, are working very, very well. And we have, uh, are developing a new, a new buoy now for that will be much better um, associated to study waves uh, data. Uh, this is an example of this. Uh, this is the, the, the model that we are using now, and that's going to be a, a complete new one, a new one that is being built completely using, using 3D uh, uh, printing. Um, that's a, that is a very old uh, original buoy that we had, and this is the kind of information that we receive uh, uh, on real time in our server and it's, uh, it's available to everybody that is interested in obtaining that information. And well, they have some of the stations that we have uh, they already installed and that's the kind of information we are getting for this. For example, this is an example of a, a network that is being used along a river from the lake to the estuary and data is being gathered mostly because they, here is going to be built a couple of uh, very large dams, and this is uh, the information that we are providing to the to the environmental monitoring for this uh, the dam construction. Uh, we also have uh, systems that have mo full uh, monitoring a beach. For example, we have a, 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 a sensors deployment along a beach. That's the first one that we know in, in, at least in Latin America, there's no sensor that is been measuring waves and, and tides and temperature right on the beach. And so this is, this has been installed back in 19, in 2018. And also we have uh, cameras that are being monitoring the beach and we have information uh, taken from these cameras and the images are being processed and this uh, and this is an example of the images that uh, we can process so this has been done all automatically and we right now in since September 2018 that we install these cameras we have something over a hundred thousand images from this place. Uh, this is a kind of example of the information that you are getting and, and all the post-processing that we, we, we obtain. And, uh, and that, uh, that gives you an idea. Of course, we use in, uh, also the UAVs for mapping beaches and, and other um, coastal environments. And the course of objectives was to help develop an integrate, integrated network of low-cost monitoring stations around the Atlantic train young professionals and graduate students. And they, the idea is to, for them is to develop their own low cost sensors and platform. And they will be able to replace and repair these sensors. That's what we really think because uh, what we normally find out, that's the reason we develop everything uh, ourselves, is that uh, uh, once we, you buy uh, one expensive sensor from, uh, from a company, you repairing it that because there's no sensor, there's not actual sensor that that uh, that it will be eternal, no. And so in our cells, we normally uh, find out that the sensors break down, or you want to replace, and and that is very expensive for our, for ourselves. Sometimes it's very much. Uh, it's still more uh, expensive to send the sensor to the company for repair. So what we normally do to the people who buy the sensor for us is to give all the information so they can repair themselves or they can send us the sensor and we send it back another, another sensor so they can replace it directly. And the idea is that we, we have, instead of having black boxes, we have white boxes, basically, in which we can put our fingers inside of electronics and, and repair it without any problem. And of course, and the other issue is to, since all these sensors provide you time series data, the idea is also to give them some uh, 
basic information to how to manage and analyze this time series data. Because the, the other problem that we run out is once you have these sensors, these are very cheap sensors, and you have a, a huge amount of data, what do you do with the data? That's the, the big question. We, it's, it's not only collecting data for, the, for your monitoring program, but the point is, what do you do with the, that such amount of data? One of them is to develop a database. That is a, is a very important thing, but also um, just to um, do all the quality and assessment, quality and, and assessment of this uh, data to be sure that you have the, the right data is uh, is is uh, is well uh, uh, controlled and, and and calibrated adequately, and so and then you have to then uh, process them this this information, and this information requires uh, a specialized. Uh, 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 people to analyze that information towards uh, having uh, information that can be uh, provided to the uh, to different people that uh, would be uh, interested in this information. So that's those are the things that you really need to uh, be uh, sure that the people that will be using these uh, sensors will be able to provide. And well, the course development of every is our plan is to start this, uh, this with a pilot course. And then, if this can be uh, uh, successful, they can be replicated in other locations. Uh, uh, originally, we were thinking about 10 participants, but uh, due to the economic restriction, probably we'll have as much as five uh, participants. And we look for people who have at least an advanced. Uh, knowledge on electronics and mechanics, as well as adequate uh, uh, oceanographic information. Uh, the home institution must have some electronic lab or machine workshop, so they will be able to, to reproduce the sensors. Uh, we were thinking about a two weeks long uh, course uh, where we can provide them both uh, theoretical and practical activities. And we, at least for the first course, we, we are able to provide uh, uh, low cost accommodations for, uh, for the students. And uh, the outcome that we were looking for will be able, they will be able to build their own sensors and platform, repair and replace those sensors in short time, establish how to define the best site and condition for locating sites and platforms, make the actual installation of the sensor platform, define a maintenance program for the platform and sensors and make a, a, the QA and QC of the data as well as analyze the time series data. Well, that's, uh, that's everything I wanted to say. And if you have uh, any, any contact that you want to uh, give us, just please uh, write us. Many thanks. Thank you, Gerardo. Many thanks for the, the presentation. Very clear. I, I see already many teenagers uh, possible together with uh, the MIPRO and so on as we are working on. And yeah. uh, many thanks, many thanks for the presentation. And uh, okay. I'd like to uh, so to move on and to give the word to Tommy. Tommy is already with us. And uh, Tommy, please. He, he was with us. I think he left now. Let's wait a little bit. I don't see Tommy. Uh, yeah, he was. The panelist. He's? Yes. No, he's not now. He was. So, and uh, let, let's move on. Let's move on. And let's come to the, the second section. And um, because I, I just uh, received some news from uh, Salou Fei from, from Senegal and from Ivanice as well. Uh, they cannot be with us now. And the Kony should be here. He was with us in the beginning, but I don't know what happened. 
So I think that we can move on and uh, receive uh, the presentation from from Tommy when he will back uh, to the to the to the panelists role. Okay. So um, please, uh, in the in the second section, uh, we'd like to to have some uh, updates from the Coastal Predict program, and. Uh, I'd like uh, to to give the word to Joaquin Tintore. And uh, please, Joaquin, uh, could you please give us uh, the updates from Coastal Predict and uh, the, the the macro is yours. Joaquin, we cannot hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, that's good. Perfect. Okay. Good. Okay. Yes, better. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Can you see my slides also? Yes, that's perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and thank you really for the opportunity to present uh, Coast Predict. Uh, observing and predicting the global coast and ocean, which is a program which has been recently endorsed by UN Decade, and uh, which we would like to, to share with you the present situation. We already started last year, and, um, and what I wanted to, uh, today is on behalf of Nadia Vili and Emma Heslop, co-chairs, to present you with the advances on uh, Coast Predict. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, okay, Coast Predict, the first and most important issue is that Coast Predict, we want to redefine really the science of observing and predicting the global coastal ocean. And uh, the reason for this or what, uh, how we want to approach this is focusing on the many common worldwide features of the coastal ocean uh, to design systems in a global framework that we can later implement locally in coastal locations worldwide. And to me, what is essential about this sentence, which I wanted to write completely, is really that we are going to try to focus on the many common worldwide features of the coastal ocean. Uh, I think this is very important, and that's the bottom line behind Coast Predict and behind uh, a lot of the work that uh, we have also been doing in Europe, uh, in particular, under the frame of Jericho the Joint European Research Infrastructures Coastal Observatory Network that Laurent Delaunay is, uh, is leading. Um, and um, what we want then is to learn uh, and to apply uh, our, uh, our expertise and our learnings to a more global framework. Next slide, please. So uh, revolutionizing the global coast and ocean uh, observing and forecasting, Coast Predict as a UN Decade uh, endorsed program uh, chaired by Nadia Pinardi, Vili, and uh, myself. Next slide, please. Next slide is uh, that uh, uh, we will include the co designing the infrastructure that is needed, the infrastructure in terms of observing, forecasting, and data systems offering open and free access to coastal information to give us the ocean we need for the future we want, following the UN decade um, uh, words. Next one, please. Uh, so what we want is a transformational action, uh, also following UN decades, to really transform the way we are working uh, in the coastal ocean. Uh, and by coastal ocean, we include the inshore and we include the offshore from the open ocean to the uh, estuarine mounts and the coastal urban uh, settlements. Next slide, please. 
So the next line is really the aims of uh, Coast Predict to transform the science of observing and predicting to develop. Uh, we not only want to transform the science and the way we work, we want to develop a really integrated coastal and open ocean observing and modeling system. We want to do this system to provide improved multidisciplinary and extend predictive capabilities for the coastal zone and responding clearly to society needs. Yeah. And to upgrade, not only we want to work on science, integrated modeling and observing and provide extensive range capabilities, but also upgrade infrastructures to be sure that the, the data are of adequate quality and that they can be exchanged with the standard protocols. Next slide, please. So uh, all this is in the frame and it's called design uh, by Goose. Uh, in the three goose uh, leaded ocean decay programs, ocean observing co-design, observing together, and uh, Coast Predict. Next one, please. So uh, at Coast Predict, we have designed three major uh, high-level objectives uh, following the UN decade objectives all well. Um, the first one is a predicted global coastal ocean the upgrade to a fit for purpose oceanographic information infrastructure, and then the co-design and implementation of, of an integrated coastal ocean observing and forecasting system, adhering to best practices and standards and design as a global, global framework, focusing, as I said, on the many common worldwide features, but also essential to be implemented locally. Next slide, please. And those are the expected outcomes. The expected outcomes are those three major elements, uh, uh, an integrated knowledge of uh, global coast and ocean from events to climate. So from this knowledge and this in integrated and enhanced knowledge, what we want is to be able to design and implement uh, an integrated open ocean coastal observing and modeling multidisciplinary system with this knowledge and implemented integrated ocean observing and forecasting system what we want is to be sure that we can extend and improve the predictive capabilities for the coastal zone worldwide and through this improvement of uh, predictive capabilities we want to be able to develop methods for trace trusted data and information exchange across all the value chain with these new methods and these improved capabilities, what we want is to develop solutions. We want innovative and sustainable applications for coastal solutions that directly benefit local populations, including well-being and human health, of course, right now, nowadays. And with all those elements, what we are also uh, working on enhancing is the increased equitable education and capacity building for observing and forecasting the global coastal ocean. So those are the expected outcomes. And uh, thank you, next one. Uh, just a quick uh, couple of examples, the coastal forecasting challenges, accurate forecasts are essential. And this is a recent example, example from Venice, where um, the forecast uh, in this, on December um, uh, 2028 uh, was uh, pretty good but uh, uh, the difference was unfortunately uh, uh, higher than 10 centimeters and the need from the engineers is nowadays to have a forecast with uh, a forecast lead time of two to three days and an error smaller than 10 centimeters. So this is the real challenge and we have today the capabilities. Another essential element which I want to emphasize and coach predict, and again, this is similar to what we are working in Jericho, is that uh, things have changed in the last 10 years. And today, nowadays, we have the capabilities to really work towards this lead time of two, three days and errors smaller than 10 centimeters, um, which is something that we were not capable of doing 10 years ago. Next slide, please. So this is also another example, which is more related to the improved urban oceanographic predictions. And that's related to the work uh, and the book uh, of um, Alan Bloomberg, The Urban Ocean, 
where you see uh, the external marine influence, the natural system, the societal subsystem, and the external influences. And we want, what we want is through this urban ocean uh, to connect uh, really the different uh, domains. Next slide, please. Uh, this new modeling approach is also very much related to the uh, capabilities, the visualization capabilities and the uh, uh, artificial intelligence capabilities uh, in terms of impact forecasting. And you have here some examples also on the prediction of coastal storm surge inundation. Next one, please. And uh, the final example here is the Coast Predict new integrated observing uh, and forecasting approach with the multi-platform capabilities on the left uh, and the numerical capabilities and the data center, the data capabilities on top uh, of uh, this uh, slide. Next slide, please. So with all this at Coast Predict, uh, we define a number of focus areas and projects. We have six major focus areas which you have here, and we will focus at uh, Coast Predict on 10 world ocean areas with core projects. Um, core projects are being defined for endorsement, and right now four core projects uh, were submitted for endorsement, and uh, we will know actually, I think, tomorrow uh, what the final situation is um, tomorrow because of the uh, World Ocean Day tomorrow. Next slide, please. Uh, this is now a schematic of the Coast Predict governance structure with a steering committee, early career ocean professional group. We want a transformative change, and this transformative change has to involve certainly the early career ocean professional group. So we have a dedicated ECOP uh, group, we have an advisory group, and uh, on the right of the slide, what we have is the major uh, international uh, elements, the GOOS GRAs, IODE and Ocean Best Practices, and different decade programs, collaborative centers, and communities of practice. All this is uh, really um, iterating continuously with the executive group, the focus area groups, and the definition of the core projects. Next slide, please. From the governance structure, um, I'm reaching the end. Uh, the timeline, two, two timelines. Here is a short timeline, uh, short term timeline, where you see here the program development, the structure set up, uh, and the key events uh, that uh, we have been uh, identifying both in the recent past and uh, in the near future. Um, next slide, please. Uh, okay, thank you. And this is okay. Okay, that, that's fine. And that's the timeline, the long uh, timeline uh, to 2030, with phase one on the definition of the scientific implementation, governance, and first round of projects. And now we are starting phase two uh, with the first round of projects in different coastal regions, uh, the design of the second round, and slowly implementing uh, the coast predict program. Um, we are planning for a 10 years, as you see, initiative where we really want a transformative change of the way we are working in the coastal ocean. Next slide, please. Who we are, just uh, a couple of examples. Of course, all the information um, uh, is uh, on the website, which we, you have here, coastbreak.org. And who we are, we have uh, uh, a big number of key uh, worldwide institutions in the steering committee. We have an advisory committee and the early career ocean professionals, which I just uh, mentioned. Next slide. And uh, from who we are, the need uh, to involve other teams, and in particular teams from the All Atlantic Initiative and CoastNet, uh, certainly more than welcome. Uh, what we need is uh, you to contact us if interested, and uh, uh, we need to be sure that we reach out to the different communities and uh, uh, really advance on this uh, transformative change that we can only do all together. Next uh, and final slide, please. All this then is uh, GOOS uh, Coast Predict um, initiative, 
and the All Atlantic uh, Coastal Observing and Technology Network. What we're looking forward is uh, to really uh, more strongly in the near future interact with you, get your ideas and uh, uh, exchanges, and uh, all together reinforce uh, these uh, worldwide and all Atlantic uh, coastal capabilities. So I'm finished and I thank you very much for the opportunity and ready for uh, any questions and discussion. Thank you very much. Many thanks uh, Joaquin for the presentation, very clear and uh, really a good overview of Coast Predict. A lot of iterations and I think that CoastNet may help also to improve our ability to, to predict the coastal ocean. Uh, which is indeed the, the most important region uh, concerning the population that live uh, all along the, the coastline. So uh, I, I'd like to, to come back to Tommy Borman uh, and after we can uh, start the discussion about what has been presented here. Tommy, welcome and thank you for, for being with us uh, and uh, the micro is yours, please. Tommy, we still cannot hear you. Tommy, the, the sound the, the sound is not really very good. Oops, apologies. Um I am back. Can you hear me? Yes, that's good. We hear you, but we cannot see the presentation. Okay, let me share it again. Apologies, my internet is not uh, the best. Hopefully it will uh, last. Okay, you okay. can see now. Yes, that's good. You can hear very well as well. All right. Okay. All right, I don't know where I lost you, but uh, I'm just going to give you an update around uh, where we are with the shallow marine and coastal research infrastructure. So I'm not going to go through the entire presentation like I've done before. If, if anyone's interested, they can look at uh, some of my previous presentations on the shallow marine and coastal research infrastructure. But just as a, a background again, so it's based in South Africa. Um, and uh, it's, it consists of 15 research platforms. Um, all around the coast. So it's a distributed network of uh, research platforms and infrastructure consisting of sentinel sites where we study intensely um, certain areas and parts of the coast um, all the way down to the Southern Ocean as well. As you can see from the Uh, information and then we have to write the findings from yes, we cannot hear it very well. Apologies, I think uh, my internet is not going to be strong and good enough for, <laughs> for me to complete my presentation. Um, 
No problem. You Would can, you like you me can... to maybe just send the presentation? Yes, yes, please. Go ahead. You can discuss about, you can say some words about what we're going to present and, uh, and to have an overview of the, the updates. If you, if you send the presentation, maybe Tanya would uh, display it. And Tommy, uh, to save some uh, bandwidth, you can uh, close your video and just uh, using the audio. Maybe it will help. Um, yes, good please. idea. Yes. Yes, please, Tommy, send please Tanya. The geopolitical complexity. All right. Close my video. I've stopped all incoming video. Can I share again? The presentation. Uh, okay, you are trying to share. Yes, just try like maybe you try like that. Or Tanya will display the presentation if she has the PowerPoint file. Yes, I think it's better because the sound is too much great. Yes. So, Tommy, you should not share your screen, I think. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll share it. I'll email it quickly or send it via a Dropbox. Okay. I think that would be the, the easiest. I um, think so, yeah. Okay, just um, yes, yeah, so there's quite a few initiatives that I wanted to to discuss with with everyone that we're busy with uh, that would be relevant to you to everyone. Um, who do I share it with? Uh, with me, with me, with Tanya. Did you did you receive Tanya? Uh, have not received yet. Tommy, did you send by email to Tanya? Uh, maybe if you want We cannot hear you, Tommy. If, if you can send by email to, to Tanya, she can uh, present and you may discuss during the presentation. Just wait the time to cross the Atlantic. Uh, Moa, I think we, we lost Tommy. Why, we lost Tommy? Yeah, he's not connected now. So let's move on. I, I'd like now uh, to, to invite uh, Sofia Cordero to bring us some ideas about how Coastnet may and should interact if you have other joint, joint uh, uh, pilot actions and uh, for example uh, the training and the uh, data please uh, sofia could you, you welcome sure. and nice to see you thank you moasir thank you very much and it's really nice to see uh, the coastal observation community uh, getting together uh, virtually we know these these last two years have been quite a change uh, uh, for all of us in, in the world, but the activities in scope of the Atlantic haven't stopped. In fact, uh, uh, the stakeholders finalized the, the co-design of several joint pilot actions and AA Marinette in a, is an example of that, as well as its uh, activity uh, on coastal observation. So first of all, let me congratulate all of you that have developed these joint pilot actions and currently, that are implementing it, and all the others that are here also present, because this is really, uh, um, or the, the Alliance really wants to put everyone together and align what uh, uh, is out there in order all of us can find the, the needed solutions uh, um, 
to, to our uh, to our future generations, in fact, to our uh, daughters, sons, uh, nephews, uh, etc. So, uh, having said this, uh, cooperation is really key, and synergies uh, between the different uh, initiatives is key. Not only uh, um, today, as we are seeing for the coastnet uh, activity, but also between the different joint ballot actions that uh, Anchor is, um, is supporting and seeding. So uh, there is a joint ballot action also supported by Anchor uh, that is tackling uh, uh, capacity building and uh, training uh, not only for technicians, but also for scientists, early career scientists. Um, and there is uh, uh, other, other joint ballot action that it's also very connected uh, with this one here, that is the data. And we have heard when I make the, that comment uh, in the chat, we were hearing that it's not enough to collect the data. And that's true. Now, okay, we have a bunch of data and what will we do with it? We need to teach also our uh, students, our technicians, uh, our early career scientists on what can we do with the data? How can we analyze them in order to produce uh, the information, because at the end, what we all uh, need is information and what we all need to uh, pass to our governments is uh, uh, information. So in order to uh, um, uh, to have this uh, over, over um, broad view of, of what we are doing uh, at the Atlantic level, I think the different joint pilot actions really need to create synergies. So your, you have the infrastructures to obtain the data. Now you need to uh, um, promote the synergies with the joint pilot action on uh, capacity uh, building or uh, the training platform uh, with Werner, ECAO, uh, and uh, uh, the remaining team uh, along and across the Atlantic Ocean, uh, as well as with uh, uh, the joint pilot action on the data, the data 2030 where uh, uh, the aim is to develop uh, a portal uh, that not only is an archive uh, of data, but also uh, uh, where we can have information uh, on the data at the Atlantic level. So I really think that uh, in all your uh, activities, you should promote these, these synergies with these two, uh, um, these two joint pilot actions. And the best way to do that Okay, we are already uh, uh, working together for uh, one year, I, I believe, or one year and a half in the giant pilot action, but there will be an opportunity to work on the synergies. Uh, on the 15th of July, so next week, there will be the second workshops on synergies. So it's really important that the leaders of these uh, giant pilot actions, AA Coastnet, uh, uh, at that workshop, uh, inform about uh, your needs in terms of capacity training uh, and also in terms of uh, data analysis, a data archive, in order we can find the right synergies uh, among the, uh, all these uh, GPAs. Um, really, the, uh, the All Atlantic Cooperation uh, should uh, contribute and with these synergies should uh, um, focus also should, should contribute to uh, to other endeavors that are already occurring, not only in the UN uh, uh, decade, but also as we have uh, heard now in the uh, coast predict. So really the Atlantic cooperation can be a model for these uh, uh, high level processes, even more high level global processes, um, uh, by really tackling all the synergies that are needed, not only in their own uh, area of, of working, but also beyond it, and uh, uh, also working on the, all the cross-cutting uh, teams. So, uh, Moasir, I think this is all that I uh, I want to say. If there is any other uh, uh, thing, uh, uh, let me know. Thank you, Sophia. I was just wondering if you could have some kind of meeting between these these joint actions, you know, and put together the people from Data 2030 and uh, with CoastNet and put together the people with uh, from training and, and to discuss the possibility to improve the cooperation. One quick meeting. I know the agendas are, are really 
full book, but uh, a very quick meeting in one hour, two hours, just to, to, to know more about and how can we really interact. I, I, I think that this meeting of the 15th uh, will be the kickoff. Well, it's, it's really the second kickoff, but anyway, it will be a kickoff for, for these more uh, uh, specific meetings between the different joint pilot actions. So I suggest that next week, uh, uh, that we are all together in that uh, in that meeting, start to to uh, to analyze uh, possible cooperations, and then in the separate meeting, back to back with that one, or the week after, or something, we can further uh, discuss how to implement the ideas. Because one thing is to have the ideas, and then it's how we will do it, and the how it's it's where it's so important has has the idea. So let's first. Uh, on the 15th, uh, uh, discuss the ideas, and then uh, after that, let's promote a meeting between the different joint pilot actions to uh, uh, keep strengthen the, the synergies and see how to implement them. Great, great. I think that's good. A good, a good track to follow. Uh, but uh, uh, if you if you could send more details about the the meeting and on the 15th, it would be great to share with the people from Constnet and, and so on. And well, the meeting we... on the 15th, it's only for the leaders of the pilot. Ah, action. that's good. Okay, because ah, okay. there's too many people in the room. There are six giant pilot actions. Um, so that, that's why I believe you have you have received as well as uh, uh, Jose and, and Florence an email from uh, okay. from Locan, from uh, Sylvia. Okay, okay, that's good. So Florence and Jose will be there as well, and we can after that follow with the back-to-back -back meetings. That's good. Okay, excellent. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you very so, much, Sophia. You're welcome. Uh, Johan, yeah, Sophia, it's it's 15th of June or 15th of July? June, I'm sorry. Oh, next week. Next okay. week, yes, exactly. I have here July, but no, it's next week. Let me confirm it. Yeah, 15th of June, sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sophia. Thank you very you're, much for this. You're welcome. Input, very important. Uh, Tommy, uh, could you try now to see what about the SMCRI? Um, it, it depends if Tanya received the, the presentation. Okay, Tanya, did you receive it? Yes, I have received and I'm going to try to... Um... I sent it via Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think this is good, no? Perfect. Tommy, it, it's up to you. All right, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm not gonna switch on my video, just in case. Um, Tanya, you can uh, move to the next slide. And the next one, I spoke about that one. Um, is there, if there's a bit of a lag, uh, then uh, I can just, uh, okay, there we go. Tommy? Tommy? Definitely, it's not a good connection, I, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, it seems that he he's not connected again. Ah. Okay. Okay. So um, let's let's try to to move on. So I'd like to to ask you to 
to everybody and attendees and panelists that you, if you have any question about what had been presented here today and suggestions, please, uh, if you have any question, go ahead. So uh, I'd like to start by by saying some words uh, and that I received uh, more a suggestion than a question to Garcia, uh, Carlos Garcia, about uh, the the use uh, uh, of uh, academic institution to make the bridge between Sin Costa and. Uh, uh, port authorities in Brazil. I think that the example you mentioned, Garcia, in the uh, Rio Grande and the Rio de Janeiro port is very interesting. And I think that we could spread that uh, to other uh, cities in, in Brazil. So uh, this, do, do, you, do you have any comments to, about that? Yeah, I can comment on that. Um, as you know, we're facing financial problems in Brazil, so it's pretty hard to maintain a monitoring system using people from universities. So it's not, uh, Sin Costa is not, uh, <clears throat> is, has not annual budget for, from any, anybody. So the coordination has to find money every year to keep the system uh, <clears throat> going on. So a couple of uh, three years ago, four years ago, that I was invited to 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 start working with port authorities. They need data. They need data for a lot of uh, <clears throat> activities regarding as uh, you know <clears throat> ship safe uh, navigation, safety, um, dredging. So I I get in my people involved in a dredging program in Rio Grande, which was kind of uh, two million, let's say two and a half million dollar project program. So we stole five buoys, a lot of instrumentation. We did a lot of work at the field to, to monitoring uh, <clears throat> a dredging program. We cost about, uh, um, let me see, a hundred million dollars, something like that. A very huge uh, program of dredging in the in the Rio Grande port. So <clears throat> I spend a lot of time doing, you know, uh, research on on dredging and uh, monitoring dredging activities. So that's one way of finding money to keep Sin Costa going on. And uh, this is Rio Grande, in, in, and we are about to sign another agreement for a five years contract. But now we are not only interested on uh, dredging activities, but also uh, regarding uh, all port, of, port activities. Okay, so we're going to put the instrument at the entrance of um, <clears throat> Rio Grande Channel. We, we're going to look at uh, flood, uh, the, uh, the motion of uh, mud flood in in the coastal environment, so it's a very huge program as well. So sea cost is 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 uh, you know we work um, putting instrument at the sea, but also we are doing some research, which is we are not at the beginning. I wasn't thinking about that. Regarding Rio de Janeiro, we supply data for. Uh, companies, so they they use a uh, private company use the data for run a program which is called dynamic of draft for ships getting and get out of Guanabara Bay, and we have been working with them for the last three years as well. So we we're going to work for another two or four five years depends on them, and uh, the Compañía Docas do Rio de Janeiro as well is another company we are working with. Uh, but no, we never receive any funds, but we're providing data. And the city hall of Rio de, Rio de Janeiro as well did data for <clears throat> to prevent, you know, uh, storm surge, uh, big wave sometimes appears in the Copacabana Beach in, 
and some place in Rio de Janeiro. So they, they all data uh, flow directly to uh, their uh, center in real center of uh, of operation in Rio de Janeiro. So, um, although at the beginning I was hoping only to get money from you know the Brazilian government and much more money for Brazilian agencies, government agencies, but at the end uh, I realized that there is not enough money to keep sequester going on. But then it, there is an uh, imbalance between uh, instruments and buoys and activities. So Rio de Janeiro and Rio Grande is, is much more favored by these uh, agreements. So that's, we can do that as well. We're trying to do it in Salvador and Bahia. And uh, we, we have been invited to do some, something similar in the north of Brazil, but the group is pretty, pretty small. And um, it's pretty hard to maintain, you know, uh, all those activities with a group uh, in Rio Grande do Sul. At the end, it's one way of keeping uh, the monitoring system going on. You know, it's funny, and also yeah. the the, and the <clears throat> society, you know, get uh, yes. Yes, yes, nice. Because I think that maybe uh, the 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 university can be used as to to, to make a bridge uh, with each port authority and Sin Costa. You know, maybe we yeah. can discuss about that. Yes, we do, we maybe. do. But the university, the lectures has another, you know, mission yes. at university, so it's, it's not easy. Yes, yes, it's only to keep the bridge to to yeah, start yeah. the bridge after the, after the bridge is is built. It's a uh, among uh, port authorities and Sin Costa, but only an idea that uh, someone suggested here. Uh, I'd, I'd like also uh, 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 listen a, a little bit more uh, from you, Joaquin, and concerning the, the links and the, the connection uh, between Coast Predict and uh, all Atlantic Coast Net. Uh, could, you, could you give more ideas about how can we really construct these interactions? How can we contribute? To, how can we interact more directly with a Coast to Predict program, please? Your micro. We cannot hear. Apologies. Uh, thanks very much, Marcir. Uh, the idea really. Uh, I think uh, uh, what I would suggest, uh, or, or the way I think uh, uh, it's uh, usually more uh, efficient, is to try to identify common problems that uh, we can really work together. Um, and um, uh, we have uh, the three well known elements uh, um, observing, forecasting, and data. Um, and uh, so my suggestion would be to try to uh, identify common problems, common issues uh, that uh, we can tackle uh, together um, and find uh, then uh, solutions working together also. Um, I think that and, and the, the, the next thing, of course, is uh, to try to also find uh, some projects, some specific projects at the end. We are all extremely busy on the day by day. So um, uh, finding uh, or working together on specific projects would also be important. And, and that's why we are also right now uh, at the level of Coach Predict, um, thinking about uh, submitting new projects to UN Decade, uh, uh, which is not clear, at least to me at uh, right now, the level of funding that the UN Decade will be providing, but the endorsement by UN Decade is certainly um, a good uh, uh, way forward to try to find uh, regional, national, or international funding. So that's somehow what we can bring right now to uh, from Coast Predict a frame 
general and clear ideas uh, about common worldwide problems and um, and also the tools in terms of observing forecasting and data uh, together with the real interest of really integrating those elements we do not really want to uh, we want to transform the way we are working um, and uh, what is clear is that we want to work together from the very beginning observing forecasting and data and also from the very beginning uh, the science components but also responding to very clear societal questions those would be my my initial comments at least right now thank you thank you Joaquin uh, so uh, what are, you are mentioned is really uh, uh, important because uh, as far as I understood uh, we can uh, in the national level not really the small project and so on but uh, the the largest project we, we can uh, be somehow labeled by coastal predicts and this can uh, really help to 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 find funds you know yeah. so that's good that's very very interesting yeah. you can you can work with with that line but because the problem i think that are more or less the same you know uh, everywhere so uh, we can find a specific subject uh, a specific coastal net uh, uh, problem that you will be sure uh, something that you are working already in coastal predict program so and uh, but the the possibility to have this label is is really uh, interesting uh, for the applications and so on thank you very much thanks very much i, I fully agree thank you i i don't know if you have any question uh, any questions any specific question lohan um Maybe we could ask to uh, Florence Coronel, who is here, about the, uh, the 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 timing that is left in the in the framework of the Encore project for the joint actions, because uh, I was discussing with Florence a few weeks ago about the possibility maybe to organize a presidential meeting, a presidential last event, and I think that uh, the time is quite. Uh, is quite short until the end of the project. That's a is good Florence, question. I, I, I would can, ask. Can speak? Can take the voice? Yes. She. I, I think that I can ask Tanya. Could you could you introduce for Hans, please, and the panelist? Ah, she needs to be in the panelist. Yeah, uh, that's it's easy. Okay. It's very quick to, to do. Yes, done. She's already on the list. You can talk. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Uh, Florence, please. I hope she's, uh, she has the possibility to speak. Yes. Yeah. She's Hello, Florence. Coming. Hello, Florence. <laughs> Did you hear the question, Florence? Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. I was doing two I can, different things at the I same can, time. I, I, I can repeat the question, Florence. Uh, I was wondering how how much time we have until the end of the Encore project to make uh, our COSNET uh, alive, if I could say. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking together a few weeks ago about trying to organize the third event and maybe yeah. uh, it was on show. I mean. So, uh, so th is, there are two different issues the use of seed funding and the continuation of the joint action. So the use of seed funding in principle sh should be, uh, it should be used by September this year yeah. with a possible extension of a few months, but let's stick to yeah, September at the moment. Maybe Sophia raised her, her hand or maybe okay. she had yeah, great. additional information on this. And the, the second issue is the continuation of, of the network. As you know, the, AA Marinette joint action, so the overarching joint action, is collected by IFREMER and Earth Center, uh, Jose Montino. And we are, uh, in principle, uh, in charge of um, trying to keep the network alive uh, after uh, the use of seed funding. And this is actually the principle of seed funding that was to, 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 launch, uh, to launch the existence of the network. 
So, uh, so, so that's it. And uh, I have I have shared earlier in the chat uh, the website dedicated to AA Marinette. I think that it's important to use uh, this to share information and to keep the network alive. Also after the use of the seed funding, and all of you are welcome to send us, Josie and I, any information you would like to share, any uh, event, uh, any uh, background document on your uh, infrastructures. So please do not hesitate to share information with uh, Jose and, and myself uh, to use this uh, uh, AA Marinette uh, website. Okay, thank you, Florence. Um... Sophia, yeah, if you want to say a few words, and and just be, before you speak, Sophia, just I would like to thank uh, Joaquim Torre, who just put in the chat that he was uh, needed to leave. So thanks a lot for your contribution, uh, to Joaquim. It was very valuable. Great, Sophia, please. Uh, thank you very much, very much, uh, Laurence. So yes, exactly. As Florence was saying. We, we will submit uh, the request for a, uh, the extension of, of the project. Uh, we will uh, discuss that with the UNCO project beneficiaries and, of course, uh, through them, the GPA leaders uh, and with the, the commission and the, the project officer, meaning that what we really want is that in, uh, before the event in Washington, we submit the, the extension request with everything uh, agreed from anyone or from everyone. And like this, we uh, can be 100% sure, or at least 90% sure that we will have the extension approved. But mm -hmm. for now, uh, try to plan everything until the end of September. If you are not able, uh, uh, you might have some, some more uh, months, maximum six months to implement it, mm -hmm. but we will keep uh, discussing this during this, uh, this month. Uh, regarding the, the long-term uh, uh, implementation of the trend pilot action, this very important uh, uh, issue that, that uh, uh, you touched, Lohans, uh, uh, all the trend pilot actions, uh, when they were thought, uh, they were thought to be long-term. So currently, after the end of the project, there will be no seed fund uh, to continue to work on it, but we hope that uh, uh, there will be other opportunities where we can uh, find some uh, funding to keep supporting the activities uh, of the Alliance, either uh, through the mission Starfish or uh, uh, other, uh, other projects that, uh, that might come. But uh, anyway, the willingness of the institutions to keep going this initiative is the most important. As far as I understood, uh, and the different institutions are not only in this cooperation because you think it's nice, it's because you feel the need. And as you feel the need, I think uh, uh, we should all work together, having in mind that uh, there might be some uh, shortages of this seed funding for uh, short periods, periods of time, but uh, uh, the Alliance is very committed to uh, keep these activities going on uh, um, and, and being supported with the different instruments that they need along uh, the time. So let's uh, also hear from the, the co-chairs in the Washington event on, because it's issue of uh, um, sustainability of the activities that are already going on in the Alliance is, uh, is very important and I would say it's crucial at the moment in order not to lose uh, uh, all the connections that we have been uh, uh, building uh, through the uh, the last years, so um, we will be here. Although the seed funding might end uh, uh, in September or six months after, but we will be here and we will keep fighting uh, for uh, a continuity of these transactions with the needed uh, instruments. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sofia. Okay, well noted, and. Moisir, any other questions? To... I don't yeah, have here go. any other question, but maybe someone would like to 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 say some uh, some words, questions. It's very nice to have this this news about uh, the the continuity and the expansion of the Marinette and the joint actions in general. 
I think it's very important. Uh, I think that uh, the seed period has has made his job, and now we we try to to find funds to to go ahead because it, this is a need to everybody all over the Atlantic Basin. It's sure good to have these these news. Uh, any question, please? Uh, just to add more serious on this uh, on the seed funding, maybe, maybe it was said before, but I was not connected all the time. We, you actually for the AA Costnet, I mean you, the partners of AA Costnet, still has uh, budgets to to use actually. So independently from from the long term uh, implementation of of the joint action, um, it's it would be good to think about it because uh, it was initially planned for travel and accommodation for workshop. And uh, the two workshops were uh, organized uh, remotely uh, last year, and this one as well. Yes. Uh, so I, I don't know if you think about it's always good to 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 organize uh, meetings or workshops, scientific workshops in conjunction with other scientific meetings, so you can have uh, more participants. Um, but um, yeah. Some other joint action uh, leaders already used. There can be some small deviation from the use of, uh, of the funding. It's not necessarily to organize a workshop. That could be, I don't know, some exchanges uh, to visit one of the infrastructures or uh, uh, several things are possible. So I'm not... Um, just yes. keep this in mind. It's not... Um, Necessarily, one AA Coast Net workshop. Uh, yeah, it yeah, could sure. be a participation of some of you to a coastal uh, infrastructures related events or and so on to promote the network. This type of thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so keep okay. this in mind. <laughs> it would don't be a pity not to use it because it could be lost. Don't, don't forget the money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Yes. But I, I was just, uh, uh, I'd like to know, we need to, to use uh, this money uh, until uh, by the end of September, is that? Or? Yes, the, so that's it. Uh, it is very short now. But uh, Sofia just said that we there might be an extension of six months, which would be better <laughs> for, for the use of this. Um, yeah, yeah, great, okay. Okay, thanks a lot, Franz. Yes, many thanks. Merci beaucoup. So, uh, yes, I think that we, we do not have questions. Uh, uh, I think that can move to the end of the, our meeting a little bit anticipate because we, we could not have some, uh, some network here today, unfortunately. But I think that we had a good discussion. It's very interesting all that Joaquin brought to us and Sofia uh, about the, the, the next steps of uh, uh, Coastnet. So I think that we could think, uh, Lohan and colleagues, yep. on have some kind of uh, uh, presidential face-to-face -face meeting in the next time. I think that would be great to have that if possible, uh, together with some some uh, other uh, scientific meeting that is planned for the second half of this year. And uh, it would be great. And we cannot forget also that we have planned uh, exchange for training and so on. If you have some ideas concerning that, I would invite uh, to send uh, a suggestion and ideas to, to myself and to Lohan. Uh, to 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 try to to identify what can you do with this money that is really important to improve the coast to net and to spend uh, very well this this money that we have uh, this this pandemic money I would say because uh, as we did our as we had our meetings remotely now it's time to now now it's time to meet the people I would say please Lohan no that's fine. I just had technical problem and it solved. Okay. Yes, thanks a lot, uh, Moisi. I do agree that uh, now to uh, emphasize a bit to, uh, to to progress on our collaborations, I think we will need to meet in a way or another. It will be uh, it will be more to be more efficient.
Okay, yes. so yeah, good. Yes. So thank you very much. If you you don't have uh, any more questions, thank you very much for for having this time with us to have uh, this time to discuss about Coastnet. Uh, one last information: uh, we will have uh, in Porto de Galinhas uh, the Triatlas General Assembly by the end of uh, September, uh, beginning of October. We will have a summer school uh, one week uh, earlier in Tamandaré Beach, uh, here south of Recife as well, close to Porto de Galinhas. And after that, we will have the Pirata Tropical Atlantic Variability Meeting, back to back with Triatlas uh, to uh, General Assembly, the third Triatlas General Assembly. So we, we don't know, my maybe we could think and to have some back to back uh, uh, meeting uh, from Coastnet as well. It's only uh, an idea and uh, we can discuss uh, later about that and to find another uh, good opportunity to put the people together. Okay? Okay. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot. Nice to see you and good continuation and have a nice day uh, every, everywhere, everybody. Bye bye. Thank thanks you. Eh? Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. So, first, identifying these project results.